Dude, you are doing it all wrong. If your music sounds like this below your dialogue, you're doing it wrong. In today's video sponsored by Motion Ray, I have four tips for you on how to make your music sound a whole lot better when it's below your dialogue. Let's jump resolve, check this out. Here's tip number one. We're gonna jump over into the Fairlight page here. And in Fairlight, we have our music track right here. And the first thing I like to do is reduce some of the conflicts between our dialogue and our music track. And how do we do that? We're gonna use the EQ to do that. So in Fairlight here, you wanna make sure you've got your mixer open. You wanna scroll down in your mixer till you get to the EQ. If you don't see the EQ, go ahead, click the three little dots and make sure you've got your EQ checked on right here. Double click your EQ to open it up. Now, without even knowing a lot about the EQ, all you have to do is come in here, grab point number four, and we're gonna wanna drop it down. Typically, I like to go somewhere in this 1K to 2K range. We might wanna broaden this out a little bit. You can use your middle mouse wheel to do it, or come down to the Q factor right here and just dial it all the way to the left. So I'm gonna play through this. You're gonna hear the music, and then you're gonna hear what it sounds like when we make a cut here, and it's just gonna make some space for your dialogue. And I do this all the time on all my music tracks that are underneath my dialogue. Sounds like this below your dialogue, you're doing it wrong. Today's video is sponsored by Motion Ray. I have four tips for you on how to make your music sound a whole lot better when it's below your dialogue. Jump on. So could you hear the difference there? We made a little space in the music track for the dialogue to come through so that you can hear it. Now, yes, the music is still too loud, but by cutting those frequencies in that one to two K range, give or take a little bit, depending on your music track, it's just gonna create a little space in that music for the dialogue to come through, which is exactly what you want. Your viewer must hear your dialogue. That's the most important part, and we wanna make sure that they hear it. So using the EQ is gonna make a big difference in just making a little space for your dialogue. Tip number two here is to, in fact, lower the volume. Now, we don't wanna just lower the volume on the clip. Let's get a little more fancy with it, but it's still pretty easy, and you can do this. Here's the first way to lower the volume of your clip automatically, and let DaVinci Resolve do the heavy lifting for you. Whether you're in Fairlight here or you're in the Edit tab, you can use the Ducker. New tool here in DaVinci Resolve 19, but go ahead and select your track and go ahead and open up the Inspector. Now in the Inspector, as long as your track is selected, you're gonna see the Ducker right here. This is in the free version and in Studio, so you'll have it either way. Go ahead and turn on that Ducker. Now in the Ducker here, select the source that you want your music track to react to which in this case is our dialogue. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this. I'm gonna select my MKE dialogue track. And now you can adjust your duck level right here. I'm just gonna crank it all the way up to get started and see how it works out. If you click open the advanced settings here, there are some advanced settings. You can adjust the look ahead a little bit. So Resolve kind of anticipates what's coming. The rise time you can adjust, which is how quickly does that music drop down. The whole time is how long does that music stay quieter after there's no signal from your dialogue track. And the recovery is how quickly does that volume of the music go back up once there's no more dialogue and the music can return to its normal volume. So let's just hear how it sounds here. If we boost the look ahead a little bit, we'll leave the rise time. The hold will increase a little bit. Let's say 458 looks good. And recovery, we're gonna leave at 750. And here's what it sounds like. Ooh, you are doing it all wrong. If your music sounds like this below your dialogue, you're doing it wrong. So you hear how it's working. Now, a pro tip here for you is that when our music goes back to the normal volume, it's too loud, right? If you notice it on the meters, you can even see it right here. It's still peaking a little bit. So we don't want that. So you wanna adjust the level of your music track to be where you want it when there's no dialogue, right? So I typically like to set it at minus 10 dB. So I'll just drop this down. If you hold your shift key, it'll allow you to be a little more precise with your measurements there. So you can see your dB level a little bit better and move a little slower, there's minus 10. That's usually where I like it. Let's just hear how it sounds volume wise. So that's pretty good. That's where I would like it to be. So now I would just need to come back to my music track and adjust the ducker because I don't need to duck the level all the way down to minus 18 because we lowered the initial volume of the music track. So maybe I need to pull this back to say minus 10. So it'll go to you know another 10 below the minus 10 it's already at. Gives us minus 20. See how the math's working there? So here's how this sounds. Ooh, you are doing it all wrong. If your music sounds like this below your dialogue, you're doing it wrong. There we go. Now it works out perfect. It sounds good. It doesn't get too loud when there's no dialogue because we don't want to kill the audience's ears there, right? So adjust the volume on your music clip as you'd like. Go ahead, turn on that ducker, and it's going to automatically duck the music for you. Really handy tool. Love it. Use it and make your life a lot easier. 
Now I've got two more tips, but when it comes to music below your dialogue, music choice is a really important factor in how it's all gonna sound and how it's all gonna come together. Now for this video and many of my other videos, I'm gonna come on to somewhere like Motion Array right here. I'm gonna come to the music section and I'm gonna find that specific piece of music that fits in with my video that I know I can edit and make a few changes to and it's gonna sound really good. For example, for this video we're working on right now, I came to genre and I came down to rock because who doesn't love a little rock music, right? I like to see what's new and what's fresh, so I'm gonna come over here and I am gonna choose this week, and then I'm gonna sort it by newest, and you can see it tells me which one's new. I'm gonna give them a listen, see which ones I like. I kinda like that one, it reminds me of a little 90s alternative. Any of you guys are old enough to remember 90s alternative. So I could add it to a collection, I could just download it from here, and then even when I need something like cool sound effects and stuff, I'll just jump right over here, and the sound effect you heard in the beginning here, I search, womp, in my sound effects, and I got the cartoon trombone fail. Even the lady in the beginning, that one, with the overlay there of the circle, that all came from Motion Array too. So if you need a one-stop shop for high quality assets, check out Motion Array. It's as easy as just jumping on there like I just showed you, grabbing whatever you want, downloading it, dropping it in your project, and you're good to go. If you use the link in the description below, you can get two months for free, and you can also get a bunch of free assets. So if you want free stuff, check out Motion Array, grab the freebies, that's what I did for a long time before I had a full account, and I think you'll just find all those assets pretty helpful. The third tip here to get that music to sit nice below your dialogue is this. I wanna apply an effect onto my track. So I am gonna come into my mixer right here. I can actually close out the inspector here. I'm gonna come to my mixer, I'm gonna scroll up, and on my music track, I wanna come to my effects section right here, click on the plus, I'm going to come down to Spatial, Fairlight Effects, and Stereo Width. Now, this is a great effect, and sometimes it works better on some songs than others, but what it's going to do is spread out the music a little bit. It's going to make it sound like it's coming from the outside of, of the speakers or of your headphones. It's going to just push it out to the left and right a little more, or that's what it's going to sound like, and it's going to make room for that dialogue to come right down the middle, right to you. Yep, you right there. And it's so easy to use. You just apply the effect onto the track, Click the drop down here for your presets, and you're just going to choose max separation. And that's all you have to do. And if you want to add a little bit of spark on there, you could just grab this and crank it all the way up, but you don't even have to if you don't want to. So let me solo my music track here, and let's hear how it sounds a little before and after. So we're going to start before, and I'll turn it on, and hopefully you can hear the difference. So can you hear how that sounds? It kind of spreads it out. Now, like I said, this is going to work better with some music tracks versus others. Just depends on what's going on in the music track. Now, for me, in this one, I could tell it sounded like it kind of pushed it out, made it a little more, uh, almost like it added a little reverb or just it made it spatially sound a little bit wider, which is what we wanted to do so we can hear the dialogue coming through there a little bit better. So I love the stereo with effect here. I use it all the time. It's in studio. It's in the free version. Use it. It's going to work out great on your music tracks. Now, tip number four here is a little more advanced, and sometimes when you're using the ducker there to automatically duck your music below the dialogue, it just doesn't work out right, or it just, I'm not happy with the results. So we've got another way that we can do the exact same thing, but have a little more control over it, and that's using something called the sidechain. The sidechain is a way to have a track react to another track, and this can be done for sound effects, for music, for anything. It's a great tool to kind of have in your tool belt in case you're not getting the results that you want when it comes to using something like the Ducker. So again, I'm going to come in my mixer here and I am going to come to my music track. I'm going to open up my dynamics panel right here. Again, if you don't see it, click on the three dots, make sure dynamics is open right there or checked on, I should say. Double click your dynamics. Now in here, we want to turn on our compressor and this is where we're going to be able to activate the sidechain. So right down here, you see sidechain and first we need to select our source. So I'm going to say MKE and then I'm gonna turn it on. So now this channel will react to my dialogue channel using the compressor. So here's how this works. I'm gonna lower this down a little bit and increase my ratio. And now let's give it a listen here and you can see what it's doing. Ooh, you are doing it all wrong. If your music sounds like this below your dialogue, you do. So now you can see it sounds really choppy, right? Well, this is where we would use the attack, hold and release to tell Resolve, hey, I want you to smoothen things out a little bit, make it not so abrupt. So the attack, we can leave that. The hold, I'm gonna bring that up. 
let's say I make it like three quarters of a second, which is like, you know, 750-ish. And then the release, I want it to take longer to go back. So let's say half a second, that's 500 there, 500 milliseconds. And now let's see how that sounds. Ooh, you are doing it all wrong. If your music sounds like this below your dialogue, you're doing it wrong. So you can see how the sidechain causes the music to react to our dialogue track, very similar to how the Ducker works. Although in some instances, I just find that for whatever reason, the Ducker isn't getting the job done. And I like to come over in here and be able to use the attack, hold and release and adjust my threshold a little bit and just kind of fine tune things so that it works exactly how I want it to work when that music ducks underneath my dialogue. Another pro tip for you here is if you are using the sidechain and you have multiple dialogue tracks, which we do in many projects, so in Fairlight here, let's say these two tracks are dialogue tracks and I want the music to react to both of those. What I would do is I would take these two tracks, I would send them over to a bus. To do that, I'd come up here, Fairlight bus format. I created a new bus called dialogue. And then in my mixer here, I'm gonna scroll down and for bus outputs, I'm gonna send my track one and track two over to the dialogue bus, which is right here. And now in my music track, we can come back, open up our dynamics panel under our compressor, and if we click this little drop down, now we can use the dialog bus as the source for the music to react to. So you can add as many things as you want into a bus, send as many tracks there as you want. Then you would just select that dialog bus. If I was just to play through this little section here, we're gonna hear how it reacts. Oh, your dialogue, you're doing it wrong. Today's video is sponsored by Motion Ray. I have four. So you can hear how it picks up both of those dialogue tracks and the music reacts to it. So there are just a few tips to help get your audio sounding awesome. Make sure your viewers can hear your dialogue in your videos when you have it over top of some music. Big thank you to Motion Ray for sponsoring today's video. And if you want to know more about audio, how to edit audio, how to make it sound awesome, how to edit your dialogue, I've got tons of videos here to help you out. My name is Jason Yulowski, your DaVinci Resolve audio guy. I will see you in the next video. Peace.